we could just barge in here. Oh. <laughs> Every year, we hear about how great we all are. And we forget the one really great person, actually three, but let's start with the really great, the heart and soul of this program. The current knack has asked me to say just a few words about you know who, who never gets the praise as he's giving it out year in and year out. When I first got into health policy, it was an unusual thing for a political scientist to do. I won't tell you the year, but I had a colleague who gave a talk in health politics at Duke, and the chair of the political science department said, well, what does political science have to do with health care? Alan saw this problem across the social sciences when he was a foundation officer at Robert Wood Johnson, and he thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to design a program. First, he had to explain to the people at Robert Wood Johnson back in those dark days what social science was. He had a terrible time explaining political science. It took him a couple of years to get it, but he worked away at it. And then he put a small committee together, five people, as you mentioned. Let me tell you just a word about that committee. We were like, what? what? How is this going to work? Alan already knew. But he needed a little cover. So we'd say, well, how about this? How about that? And he'd sit there going, yeah, it could be work. How about this? And we'd say, oh, yeah, that's great. How about that? Yeah, that's great. And so Alan could have designed it in his closet, but he designed it in a small room with four people basically cheering him on. We had no clue. How does this work? You're going to remake social sciences with foundation money, make them think about health care policy? But he had this vision. And a year later, there we were at the first annual meeting, about which the less said, the better. <laughs> By year four or five, the program was fantastic. And we all thought, well, OK, rest on your laurels. But Alan, well, you know Alan, always making it better, always raising the program to this day, making this a better program. It's hard for me to be serious with Alan because I always want to fool around. But let me say one serious thing. Of the people I've known, not only who've changed our world of health policy, but have changed what we do in the social sciences, what we do in political science and sociology and economics, very few people have had the kind of impact that Alan had. So now the inscription, the NAC members have bought Oliver Sacks' last book, wow. Gratitude, which ends with Sabbath, the essay he wrote just before his death, in which he talked about finally learning to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and Ruben has written, written these words with, for, on behalf of the NAC, with gratitude to Alan, in fond memory of our work together, as we approach our own Sabbath, we, as uh, the seventh day of our life, as a program, knowing that our work is well done, and one may, in good conscience, finally rest. Alan, on behalf of everybody, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you want to say a word? Oh, definitely. Thank you. I, I am really touched by this. And now, since uh, Jim has outed me, I'm out of the closet. So, you know, I'll be thinking about other things in the future, but I'll, I won't be doing it with a small committee. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I really appreciate this, and I appreciate all the sentiment. I want to thank all the members of the NAC. This is a, a wonderful tribute. I, I, I really, really appreciate it. But on with the show. So, I do want to tell you what's in store for you in the next two days. <laughs> So, and I'm, no, I have personal reflections on Friday. I, I have will have more. 
Two more copies? Yeah. I thought this was the only one. It's not. <laughs> Just a quick word. There's one other person who needs yet another bit of embarrassment, if you don't mind. Please. On the behalf of the NAC. The first NAC meeting was a mess. We didn't know what we were doing. We talked and we talked and we talked. We had a very hard time coming to, coming to decisions. If you were in the first cohort, I don't know how we found you. <laughs> the second year, we had this young political scientist. And he kept sort of nudging us to conclusions. Like, oh, I think the group has decided this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what we decided, yeah. And it became smooth. And over time, we'd sort of look like, Mark, are we ready? And Mark said, I think we've come to this. Finally, we made him NAC chair. And ever since, it has been, as other people have said, an intellectual feast. And that wasn't all. Um, every NAC that Robert Wood Johnson had, who was running it? Mark Peterson, whether it was investigators or um, Hickfo and one after another. I won't go on because the hour is late and I'm sure there'll be lots more embarrassing things to say about Mark over the course of the next two days. Friday morning. Friday morning. But as with Alan, you all know this, there's probably not a person in the room who has not gotten incredible feedback from Mark Peterson and our careers. Every one of us are better thanks to Mark. Mark, time for your Sabbath too. Thank you from all of us. Okay, quickly, the men get the glory, but Katie, we know who does the work. How many times has there been a problem? How many times have we solved it? I know, I know, Alan was great, Mark was great, but to you, I won't go on and on, I'll just say on behalf of the NAC, on behalf of everyone, thank you. All right, it's now really on.